welcome back to the Evercast show. As you see, we ha now have hats, except Flatus, who has no hat. Flatus, where are your hats? Not either one right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> I pulled a Tuina. No one heard you. Hashtag pull a tan I don't even. Drink. I don't even know what's worse. <laughs> you know what's worse? The fact. The fact that Tover now really does look like Helena Bottom Carter. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a compliment or like an insult? I'm not sure yet. <laughs> to me, it's a compliment, Tover. Okay. Then. I don't. I don't know. You have a lot of things going on on your head right now. <laughs> They're all falling off as well. I like how the naggy hat's eating everything else though. I was like, gonna say, like, who's about to come down and eat your head? Yeah. D despite like this, this besides the the naggy hat, like I feel like everything else is like from an ex girlfriend that just left it at your house and you never get back to him. <laughs> wow. <laughs> how do you explain the one with the the, the paws and the 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 what I assume is a polar bear. I think it's a panda hat. No, it's, it's a wolf. Hold on, wait. It's Later a wolf hat? Right, okay. Straight up, we got the naggy hat. Cause... Yep. Because. Right. Random hat. I don't know where I got this one from. What do I have next? <laughs> Scully. Like, you wear a lot of hats, man. I don't even need to explain myself. And then... Who's that? <laughs> I remember myself. people in like middle school and high school having those hats and walking around camp and stuff. I was like, oh, it's one of those people. <laughs> what the heck? The wolf hat? Like, yeah, like just different like panda hats and stuff. I mean, the girls when they wore it, it was like, okay, whatever. But when well, I saw well, a fella in a hat, I was I'm, like. Uh, listen, I'm not saying I'm, I may be buying a key for me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm probably buying a key for me. So don't. Well, awesome hat. you know what? That's cool. Yeah, I'm actually getting a very. I'm getting a skeleton key ruby. So like, when I put the hood up, it's a giant skelly head. <laughs> that's that's yeah. I mean, yeah, that's pretty cool. That's pretty. Cool. There's also a bear one that I may be buying called uh, Gloomy Bear. It it's doesn't work if you find a, black... a bear butt. It, it no, well, <laughs> it's made out of bear butt. So it's it's a black <laughs> bear and it's covered in blood and it comes with claws and it's covered in blood on the claws too. <laughs> I kind of want that one too. <laughs> nice. Yeah, so I could just sit here in a giant onesie and do ever. <laughs> That's all we need now. That's, that's, how, that's how the show's gonna go. <laughs> Welcome Fantastic. to the Evercast show with Tobrin and Derek and Legendary and Flatis and Chewina. I think we should leave it to Ornex to do our little theme song. Uh, uh. <laughs> so Tobrin, let's hear that accent you did earlier. <laughs> oh no, let's not do that. That was horrendous. Oh, it's I can do horrendous game. accents too. You start. Why do you have to be mad? <laughs> okay, round robin horrendous <laughs> accents. Here we go. Legendary, you, you start off. What kind of bad accent do you guys want to hear? The worst one. The worst one you have. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, you got to pick one though. Uh oh. Like... I'm going to go with Scottish. <laughs> That's right, you're about to be judged. Oh, well, you said worse, so you're going to get... Oh, I got my achit and my hog is here. <laughs> Golf clap to that one in kind, sir. Oh, Thank you. man. <laughs> hey, even a thumbs up from Tobes. Fantastic. All right, Rec, let's hear your best accent. Do you want us to pick one for you, or do you have one in mind? I've only got a couple, so... Let's go with, uh... Hey, Don Ricardo and... This is the Evercast show. It's all downhill from here. That's fantastic. Fantastic, sir. <laughs> we, we may need you to record that and give that as a bumper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. The Master Flatus. Take it away. Oh, me? Uh... Why do you have to be mad? It's only a game. <laughs> Nice. Both <laughs> <laughs> well played. Dobrin. Uh, okay, what accent am I doing? Southern. Southern American. Oh, Southern American. Yeah. Oh no, I want to hear that Southern Chav thing you were talking about. Oh, the, the, the Chav thing. Uh, I need the sentence to think of. Uh, 
Hold on, hold on, I'm thinking. Oh, you're right, mate. You wanna go down to the shop and get some bucky? Like, I, I, I was shaking down as a Tesco. Like, I, you fucking bring it on me. I fucking want you want me. There is your terrible no. accent. Holy crap! <laughs> That's pretty good. That, 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 this is why you don't give me a microphone. Don't ever. That was pretty fantastic, Tober. <laughs> pretty fantastic. You should do that on radio. <laughs> yeah. oh, that was terrible. All right, well, let's move on to our topics for the second half of the show. <laughs> Topics, yeah. Um, I believe we wanted to cover a little bit of Gamers Gate. Um, I know it's a hot topic, but uh, we do want to kind of discuss it from the angle of Flattis laughing hilarious. I'm sorry, I, I looked at chat, our, our Daniel, and <laughs> chat was like, I can watch two hours of this actually. This is so bad, it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Evercast episode 35, so bad, it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, <laughs> so we wanted to cover Gamersgate from the, the point of view of protecting your developers. So th we're, we're at a very social age in game development, where game developers are encouraged to, to put everything they've got onto social media, to not only plug their product, but to plug their, their, so, their, their real life, because uh, it helps build brand awareness in the end. Um, but we're seeing a lot of cases, especially with Gamersgate, where uh, females in particularly are getting like death threats and things. And we could even bring in like John Smedley bomb threats. Let's kind of open up discussion on oh, yeah. this topic um, and the importance to maintain social connections, but the the drastic importance on on protecting yourself still online. Because uh, we're kind of at this age where we're we're shedding our online identities and using our, our real identities to to identify ourselves. How many times can I use the word identify um, to identify ourselves online? Like I go by Chad Albritton on my Twitter, and, and I believe Tanlin was having a debate on whether he wanted to use his real name, whether he was still going to use Tanlin. Uh, so I think it's a hot topic for all of us to discuss, um, and I will open up the floor to you, kind gentlemen. Yeah, well, even before all of this started happening, there was always the um, the problems and risks of people being able to find you um, and find your, your information through very simple means. Um, <clears throat> for example, I'm sure if somebody really wanted, they could probably look through the phone book listings and, you know, figure out where I am and, you know, it wouldn't be that difficult. Um, a lot of people use P.O. boxes, but that only helps you to a certain extent. Um, depending on how in-depth people want to get with stuff, there's a lot of sites out there that you pay some amount of money and you can get a lot of details and information on a specific individual. It almost seems like those sites should kind of be illegal. But um, yeah, it's, um, it's definitely something where uh, there's, there's definitely a lot of issues because there's no, uh, no way to really track who is the aggressor. There's so much anonymity. Now, the, we don't have the same problem in Asia because in a lot of countries in Asia, you require basically your social security number and your, you know, your, your name, your first and not last real name as what you're using to log in on the Internet. So if you're doing something and it's harassing somebody or something that's illegal, they know who you are. It's not very hard for them to find you. So we don't we don't really have that sort of thing out here. It's a very open frontier in terms of uh, people who have means to be able to harass other people and do malicious things to other people without any recourse whatsoever being available. Fortunately, I, well, unfortunately, but I guess the uh, the the idea that there is actually going to be some amount of help coming from this. I know that IGDA has recently started working with the FBI to start. Um, dealing with some of this harassment, International Game Developers Association. Uh, I've been a member for many years, and we've had a lot of um, a lot of people, um, you know, involved with uh, game development that have had a lot of different issues, or a lot of people that potentially could have a lot of issues if things weren't as um, you know open and friendly within the the organization to be able to help facilitate their their you know goals as a, a, a professional and be able to help give them the, the, the support and everything that they need to be able to do that. But to be perfectly honest, um, this, I feel like this is just the first step. Like, yeah, FBI can, you know, they can, they can crack into places that other people can't crack into and they can, they can be a policing force where, you know, we otherwise don't have those means, 
but that that's just you know that's a an expensive band-aid on a systemic problem what's the actual solution i'm not 100 percent sure anytime i ever talk about the idea of you know social security and real names and stuff being used in the united states everybody says oh no i ain't gonna happen ah oh, no i'm taking my guns to the government at that point hook me up so i i mean i understand like it's, are you making you know, fun of me for being from the south no right now? <laughs> no it's actually i can i can understand you know uh, the the concern with that sort of thing and i i agree like our our government's actually not very good with our information and handling private and serious matters. So I can understand the concern with wanting to do something or, you know, with them wanting to do something like that and us not wanting it to be done that way. Plus, most of the people that make laws are a bunch of, you know, old white goons who don't know anything about the Internet. So it really doesn't help to have them being the ones enforcing things on or to be you know, making the laws that will be enforced. So uh, I know I've been talking for a little while here. Gamergate's definitely an issue I've been following for a while. The um, the people that it's affected a lot, like Smedley, like Zoe Quinn, like uh, Anita Sarkeesian, people I really love and respect. And you know, I I really it, each each and every one of those death threats. I just want to go out and you know with a metal baseball bat or you know some sort of device. And, you know, find the person, smash their hands, smash their face, smash their equipment. And, you know, just take pictures and post it on their Facebook. Like, yeah. that's, I, I hate those people so much. It, it's funny because there's definitely almost like a 50-50 split down internet online communities. You have those who are the complete trolls or think they're the badasses and, and want to, you know, go out and do something. You know, I'm sure pretty much most of the time these are jokes, I'd hope. Um, but in some cases they're not. Like, the bomb threat was real, the death threats were real. Um, anonymity with the internet, you know, kind of allows us to sort of be who we are. Uh, or want to be, rather. How we want to... Um, betray ourselves and in my experience with mmos and this might be because i didn't play wow um typically i'd say that overall my perspective of the gaming community is, is a community that's more tolerant than any other community i've ever been a part of even with all the trolls and things like that um and i think part of the the solution to things like this is giving the ability uh, to to handle these issues to the community members themselves. Um, I think Eve Player Council is a good first step. I, I think if all games sort of had things like this, of course we're talking about full legal issues now, but um, being able to sort of ban these people's connections to these sites is, is a good first step. So Twitter being able to say, hey, we're disabling your Twitter account because we see you're a hacker base and you've been spewing nonsense for the past two months, you know, giving giving more um, or holding social sites to, to more responsibility, I guess, is a good first step. Uh, there's many times where on Facebook I will report something for being, you know, oh, this is just trash. This uh, is basically racist and it's against the term of service. And I've never actually had a post removed from Facebook in the 30, like, basically 30 <clears throat> times I've submitted a request. They say, oh, no, it's fine. I don't even think they're checking these things. Uh, I think that's a good first step. If, if developers are having to be more social, then these social sites should have to step up or th the community feedback needs to be taken at a more serious level because I do feel that the Internet community, uh, especially when it, it, it is in regards to gaming, is more tolerant and more accepting and and generally it, it is intelligent when it comes to these issues um, i see more positive feedback about things than i see negative feedback in most times and when it is negative feedback it's because they're just so passionate about the product itself or the game that's kind of kind of my thoughts on that you know it's funny because everybody says league of legends has such a toxic community and everybody plays league of legends so you know, I, <laughs> it's kind of weird. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, and I think that's sort of the nature of the environment that, that sort of shapes the community in that regard. So, you know, it's a pure PvP game. Um, it's easy for the responsibility of a game to fall on one person. It's easy to chastise them for screwing up. And I, I think it's more the environment that in that case than anything else that kind of creates the creates the bad community but 
I don't know. You're right. It, it's a huge game. It's like the biggest PC game out right now in the world. Um, and the community is always kind of mocked for how... What's the word I'm looking for? How um, toxic it is, I guess? Toxic, yes. Yeah. Toxic is still the word. I think competitive brings up the worst in everyone, though. It does, Like, yeah. you put pressure on someone, they screw up, everyone else is not going to forget them. It's as simple as that. Well, but... I mean, it depends. When you get to a certain level, it becomes less about, you know, I'm, I'm a scrub fighting all these other scrubs, and more like, oh, no, I'm a professional, and I'm fighting other professionals. Like, Justin Wong, apparently, is, like, one of the nicest people ever, and he's he's very kind of cryptic about his his answers and stuff like when 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 somebody's saying about a strategy and he's like oh well just block but you know he's he's a very friendly person he's very um outgoing and and seems like he really likes to make friends with the rest of the people in the 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 pro street fighting circuits so it's um it it it's kind of depends on the not just the community but kind of the scope and scale of things, you know, when when you're actually at the professional level, actually attending events in person, you can't be an anonymous dick on the internet. But at the same time, anonymous dicks on the internet can't really get you in the same way because you're at a tournament space, you know, in basically an arena. Um, so they they don't really have the same kind of access to you at that point. It's only when you're outside of that that they can even get at you at all. Um, and I would say it's just as much the uh, the in game stuff as the um, between games and out of game harassment that yeah. um you know there's an issue with the game now i will say that they are taking the right steps as a game company to fix this um and i think this is steps that you know social sites should should do the same you have the tribunal um which is now starting to get real um real punishment to it now that they've tested it out a while they're stepping up you know your accounts can be banned like pretty much instantly so not just suspended but it's just gone now it is a free-to-play game so you can create another one i imagine but um, there, there's ways to still combat that. I know play, or SOE does hardware bans, and that's still kind of easy to get around, but it takes extra effort, and I imagine it weeds out most of the baddies who just are there to just screw around, because you must care a lot about the game to play it, to want to change your hardware configurations and fool the, the software. Um, th these are good first steps to take. Your hard drive serial number. Yeah, your hard drive serial number. So your... if you have a way to obfuscate that, that's awesome. You can do yeah. whatever, but... But but it you really must actually care about the game if you want to go through all that trouble. Or you're a very lonely individual who gets their thrills from that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Um, we haven't yeah. heard from really Wreck, uh, Flatus, or Tobin on the subject too much. So if you I was guys want to, about that too. So if you want to <laughs> let uh, Legendary and I not talk for a while, it's all up to you guys. Sure. Uh, Wreck or Tobin, would you like to go first? This topic's a little too uh, intelligent for me. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Tobin, you? Okay. Uh, I, I have so many mixed feelings and things like this. Like, okay, say you've been playing a game five years. Now, five years is a long time. You can make a lot of people, a lot of enemies too. Now, say in one week, all your worst enemies come to you talking shit. You talk shit back. You could get banned, and you could be like, "Well, I've been in like five years, and I got banned." There, there to be honest, ugh. there's so many levels on which things are so situational and things like this. I just feel like everything needs to be case by case. You can't just brand it and be like, "Okay, this is what we're doing." Boom! You really need to look at some of these things case by case. Because one of my friends got banned from Warcraft just because they talk shit to one person. They were the nicest person I've ever known, but they talk shit to one person and they got banned. I'm like, uh, okay. So, I, I, again, I, I have really mixed feelings. You know, in Planet Side 1, we were all convinced Dan Binter was the devil because that man was very, very, very harsh with the admin tools of suspending people for a game that we paid, you know, uh, what, to uh, a buck every two days, 50 cents a day to play. Um, he, he would levy the suspensions and bans and stuff just left and right all willy-nilly, it seemed like, to us. So, you know, there's there's definitely a point where enforcement can be so severe that it's going to hurt your bottom line. I know a lot of people quit over CSR Dan B and his enforcement of Planet Side 1. It was a problem. I know he's still with SOE and, you know, years later a lot of people have kind of forgiven him for it, but you know, it's it's I know a lot of people when they hear CSR Dan B, they cringe and go, Err. 
No, that's that's a great point. <clears throat> SOE's actually had a quite a history with um, I, it's basically censorship. What they will do a lot of times on the forums, it, it won't be against TOS um, ter terms of service for those who don't know. Um, but they'll they'll still kind of remove it. They'll say it's off topic. They'll give some offhanded excuse, and and it'll be that'll be it of the topic. When a lot of people were expressing um, their dislike of EverQuest 2 going free to play, they kind of said, "Oh, this is the mega thread, and we're just going to put all the feedback here." But I doubt they even really read it that much. It was just a place to kind of contain the topic and contain the dislike. And when other people posted in other areas, it was it was a quick like goodbye we, we don't want your opinion to be shown on our site sort of thing um and and you have a great point um when is power too much for an individual who are the people that are moderating these things are they jumping to a quick conclusion are they actually taking in this the story um i would possibly say more times than not they're doing the opposite and not giving it enough traction not caring enough especially when we're talking about bomb threats and stuff that are being issued and it takes weeks for the fbi to follow up and they might not even find the guy he's i mean so the smedley bomb threat went down by uh, basically it was lizard squad on twitter that were claiming that they they were responsible for it um and basically they were also attacking uh twitch they were kidding everybody and eve and a bunch of other games everybody at the same time and they did it for a good month i'd say before these ddos attacks stopped it took them that long to be wrangled up uh their twitter access wasn't cut off um, these are steps that could be taken immediately. Like, if you see someone conducting illegal activity or multiple times threatening illegal activity, I don't understand why these accounts are still still allowed to post and gain followings because they gained thousands of followers when they did this like it was a publicity stunt um and they became like kind of little heroes to some people i imagine Th this is areas where these social sites or these communities should should step in early and and, and take it by the balls and, and and get rid of that topic or get rid of that that person from the community so I do I'm understand. Sure moms against gaming were really happy about that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that is the funniest Twitter profile I've ever seen. Oh my god, that's the biggest <laughs> internet troll ever. It's so good though. It, 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 like, and I love that people like moms actually go there and like, and then feed into it. And the guys, the, whoever's behind it, looks like yeah. Like, uh, um, I never got to speak, so I guess I should say something. So. <laughs> um. I, I will say this, uh, as somebody who, who puts his face, not only voice, but face on the internet, um, you know, some of you have found out my Facebook through through memes and weary things, like maybe you may have found Chewy, and you found, <laughs> and I'm friends with Chewy, and you found me that way, <laughs> and my, my name is that way, and I'm very weary about who I add, because Chewy's very open and, and up there and up front, and just like anything else on the internet, um, you know, I, you know, m most of you are very nice people, but there's going to be some day, and I'm going to say something, and Chewy or may say something that's going to piss off the wrong person, that person's going to know how to do something, and that could hurt us in a different way, and not everyone agrees with the things I say, not everyone agrees with the things Chewy says, or Tobern, or Wreck, or Legend, anybody that we have on the show. <clears throat> and that sucks, because it's our opinion. Wait, who disagrees with me? <laughs> <laughs> no. Give me an address, 1v1, right now. Right? Right? So, and, it, and it's it's sad that we, you, you can't, I can't just say, like, I don't like something, and, and not have it, have, re like, if I say that, I'm afraid that it'll always have a repercussion. Like, someone out there me and not and, and who am i to them i'm i'm a nobody but it happens uh, i can tell you this one of the a world, a world of warcraft uh, uh podcasts i listen to um and i still like even though i don't play i still listen to some of the podcasts that i like the personalities and one of them is um realm maintenance and row on realm maintenance was being harassed and finally broke down and said you know what here it is here's the blog post here's my name this is what happened and the person was threatening to post the news about what had happened and 30 years ago he was living in california and he was helping a neighbor uh pay help her pay her rent while he was paying his and they raised the prices and he couldn't do it and at the time 30 years ago in california the laws for sexual predator and harassment was very not what they are today 
And she went over and said, he touched my daughter, and that's all it took. <laughs> he was thrown in jail. And, and he now he has to register as a sexual offender. Yeah. And, uh, and that sucks. And he had to post that out there because that person was threatening him and his livelihood. And people that support the show stopped listening because they found that out, and it wasn't fair to him. And... Uh, that's, that's very true. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a legal debate, too. I yeah. mean, what is law and... and... Uh, like, what so, is its purpose? Like, I, yeah, I, and I, you know, I like I give the guy credit, like regardless if if he did it or not or whatever, but I give the guy credit for saying like, fine, here it is. Like before it even escalated to the point where he had a fear, because like the one of the reasons why he loves being able to talk as Roe online is that he didn't have to. He had like he could leave that in the past, and that wasn't who he was, and he could be who he is, and. It sucks. Like, it just, it sucks. Like, and I feel the same way for game developers because, you know what? You do a job, right? Every, all of us have jobs and we all do our jobs to the best of our ability. Same thing with artists and, and game developers are a form of art, right? We play these games and they're artwork. I consider them to be artwork. Like a movie is considered artwork. And sometimes... Video games so, are the most advanced form of artwork that exists because they combine all forms of art that previously existed into one new concise form. The only other new form of art that has emerged in the past recent amount of time is 3D printing and using 3D printing style systems to make new stuff. Other than that, and like maybe using Arduino modules to make special you know, machinery and stuff... Art has pretty much been like video games has has been the major uh, the major driving point. Yeah. Please, I didn't mean to cut you off there. No, no, it's Continue. fine. In that same aspect, it doesn't mean that everyone's gonna like your art. At, at the end of the day, like, are you gonna make a great game? You you a try. Just like when I go to work, I'm gonna try to do my best job for that day. Same for Chewy, same for Tobin, same for everybody else here on this podcast right now. And it's everybody in the chat. You're gonna try your best. Does that give the right for someone else to come in there and shit on your parade and, and attack you for it? Just, like if you're if you're a street cleaner and you do and you miss a spot and someone says I'm gonna go find out where that person lives and threaten the shit out of their family for it, fuck that guy. <laughs> fuck it. Amen. Like, that guy. Like and no one deserves that. No one deserves that. I don't deserve it. And somebody in the gaming industry doesn't deserve it. Nobody deserves bomb threats. Nobody deserves their life to be threatened. And it's bullshit. Like, if you want to sit there and act tough, act tough in, in real life and as a person. You, like, like the same thing. Like, I like there's still points where I'm, like, I'm always afraid, like, if, like, Twitch grows and, like, I grow with Twitch or Tobin grows with Twitch. What's, I mean, luckily, Tobin kind of lives over in, in, in the UK. So I don't know if swatting is a thing Dude. over there. But swatting is a thing over here. Same for legendary. Like, who, who's, yeah. who's, who's going to say that one day someone's going to find out where legendary lives and just be like, fuck, here's, but this, guys, here's the bomb squad. But guys, yeah, it's sort of okay, right? Because none of us are black. Well, what? Okay. Now, <laughs> Sorry, personal opinion there. The uh, I'm just saying we'd probably get... You know, anyways. In, in, in North America, at least in the United States... Um, that is definitely a thing in the United it States is. that uh, you know white white people will not get charged the same way for anything. Um, it's it's a double standard that unfortunately the pretty much all nationwide the police department seems to kind of agree upon. And you know it's it's something where yeah one person might get swatted and you know they they get walked out in handcuffs and they come back home later that night versus somebody else depending on you know how they're perceived because of their their uh heritage um instead they do leave in handcuffs and they don't come back that night and they don't come back for you know 10 years because that's how long the legal proceedings take to, for everything to get wrapped up um but i would say that yeah the the you know swatting is definitely a concern it's definitely an issue um it's it's something that you know once again i'm member of IGDA, if something should ever come up, you know, my first words are, contact the FBI. That's where I'm getting my help from. You know? It's, uh, it's, a, it, it's a huge issue. I mean, all of this. We could have full-on, like, seminar classes of, about these issues and the, the fundamental differences with them. But um, I, we can all agree that community is, is the number one answer, at least when it comes to this, this case. Um, enough 
enough chastising of these individuals and maybe they'll stop or, or will they stop? I, well, I, I don't think have it's an answer also, for that. People who do this sort of stuff, I think they're coming from a position that they, they feel entitled or have, you know, privilege to them. I don't think, you know, somebody who's struggling to get by is spending their time attacking, you know, feminist frequency and, you know, levying death threats and stuff. No, they've got other things that they're already too occupied with. It's people that, you know, have that kind of sense of privilege or entitlement that I feel like are really the ones that's like, no, they are attacking the way that I live. Therefore, I must threaten them. And I mean, I think that's really most of what it is. Yep. I might agree. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. I'll I'll say this. This and I guess we'll move on to something else. I'll, I'll say this. Like, listen, we're we're people. At the end of the day, like, just treat people they want to. You want to be treated. Like, I, I come in and do this show, and I I will. And one day, I even called the whole chat butt clutching nerds. You know what? And I did it. <laughs> I was like, well, that's it. That's it. GG. I'm off Evercast. That's what I thought. <laughs> so I was like, that's it. That's like I'm gonna get kicked off the show. And you know what? Like you guys like took it in stride and it's like that was and you guys started like laughing and made jokes about it because i think i've done the show so long now that you guys like all right that's just his sense of humor and like don't take like like i i'm two sides of things like i'm very like a comedic person like not i I try to make jokes i just that's that's my personality and then i'm the other side where i'm like the haymaker of like (laughs) like serious talk like you don't see me coming, like all of a sudden I'll just come out of the left wing and just like Dude. There but it is. nerds just sounds like min maxers to me. <laughs> <laughs> cough, cough, Tamley, cough. Right, right. So hey, I'm a min end... maxer too. Well, I guess we yeah. all are when it comes to our specifics, yeah. A little bit. Yeah, but but at the end of the day, I mean like we're all here to like play games and have fun and, and enjoy this community and I like, you know, like, if you ever feel, I will say this, if you ever feel like you're being threatened by someone, like, just take it to the authorities to the best of your community, and, like, just know that a lot of us here in the community will stand behind you and support you if you need it, because, you know, I don't think any of us would ever attack each other, like, I support everyone on the show and everything they do, and I would never, you know, turn away or for, for whatever choices they make, if Tobin decided that he wanted to quit you know, twitch and become a monk, then that dude, I support him in that. Like he's my bro for life over there. So like <laughs> You like that's okay. become a monk. Yeah. You'll like, you'll have to shave off your hair though. I, well no not every monk has to do that. It depends on the type yeah. of monk. I would no, no. say though, um people keep saying about rails and going off the rails. No. If you've ever gone on a bumper car thing and you looked up and you see that little sparky clicky thing that's, you know, connected to the electrical stuff up above, that's basically what we're riding on right now. It's basically just a big bumper car arena. We're not actually on a track or trails or anything like that. So, yeah. Anybody who's wondering, that's how it's powered. I don't know how it works. It's totally <laughs> awesome. It's magic. Uh, I wish I knew how that technology <laughs> it's actually ma- works. <laughs> it's, ma- it's all magic. <laughs> All right. Well, we, I, I yeah. I was no. gonna say, I, I say we what we have a little more than twenty minutes left, in the and show. we have tons of questions that have backed up over the past uh, hour and a half. Yes. So we can go through those Speed one round. by one, kind of talk to Speed them. Round. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah let's, let's once be, once again, those questions. I, I like Legendary's topic. It is magic. Uh, we define the rails. This is what happens when you leave uh, Flatus and Chewina in charge. We, we we take the show and we go with it. But we hope that you enjoy our discussions. We do express personal viewpoints as always. Um, of course, this is a harder hitting topic than what we usually cover because usually it's just gaming related. But um, yeah, we hope you enjoy it nonetheless. Uh, so first question for Flatus. Uh, this is from your your buddy Delman, um, who, right. who he dis he disagreed with me and he was gonna write some flaming email into the show, uh, just tearing down my point of view. But he never did, so I guess he got as- afraid, um, or he just didn't have a good point. But anyways, he says Delma, for f- for Flattis, did you know that dwarf spelled backwards is fraud? Yes. <laughs> Of course, so, I misspelled fraud, but, but a fraud yeah, But it's it's yeah yeah. It, well, he meant he didn't misspell fraud. He just spelled dwarf backwards. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know who lost there. You or him? <laughs> I don't. I don't either. I don't either. But um, yeah. So yeah, I, so, I, how I do you defend Spe- your dwarfs? Are they frauds? I don't know why he's talking. I don't know why he's why he's, he's uh, as the kids say throwing shade at me because uh, he plays a dwarf uh, <laughs> in EQ two as a. 
I know your game, Delman. I know what you do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so next question, which is for kind of everybody. Um, do you think they will do dirt overlays, like in the latest Tomb Ra Raider? Um, so do you think that effects on the screen will happen? So if I, like, run through dirt and landmark or a spell gets cast on me, that there will actually be, like, a screen effect that will come up when on When you've got end? low health, the edges of your screen already glow they, red. Like, pulse red, yeah. In fact, Dave Georgeson said I should do that for my PvP show <laughs> to have that as the border. That's, that's not a bad idea. I think that's cool. I always liked, um, what game was it? Um... Tropical Island Crisis. When you like walked through water or whatever, it would kind of hit on your visor and would drip down. I always thought that was really cool for immersion. I'd love to see something like that in, in Landmark. Yeah, but then again, we don't have visors cool. in Landmark, but they could figure out something. No, those are cool effects. Do you think there'll be more, folks? The General thing question. is, with an effect like that, whenever I see it in movies and stuff, I always remember. Oh wait, that's just some amount of crap being put on the lens of the camera. If you actually had dirt in your eye, you'd be going, ah! It wouldn't be like, you know, partially obscured with dirt and still seeing the rest of the scene. This is something that probably uh, Rec can uh, attest to. I loved in EverQuest 1 that you could accidentally, like, blind yourself. So if you casted well, a certain spell on yourself, your whole screen would go black and you just screw yeah, well, yourself over. That, yeah. was, that was awesome. That was really a fun gameplay moment. I'd love to see that return. We're like, uh, that was fun with dueling. I remember this one time we were by a pond in Canos Hills and uh, uh, somebody blinded me and like rooted me in the pond. Like they, <laughs> they blinded me, I like ran into the water and they rooted me. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that, I mean, that's that's super cool. I, I really loved spell effects like that. I guess it's sort of aesthetic spell effects. It's not just necessarily like a damage or anything like that, but forces you to kind of play differently or, or affects your... That, that's awesome. And a lot of games don't really do that nowadays. I'd love to see a return to that kind of stuff. Yeah, for, yeah. I want to cast drunkenness on you all and, and have you literally <laughs> walk through trying to hit me and miss every time. Those would be awesome. Effects. You know, sobriety would also be an interesting spell then. Yeah, no, it would. Or if your tolerance was built up for alcohol already, then the spell didn't really have effect on you. Right. Yeah. That was part of EverQuest 1. There was it, a raid where... Uh... If but you we're have getting alcohol tolerance, okay. you're good to go. Here's the thing though, Forge Light is beyond just alcohol. If anybody saw the last live stream of H1Z1, Swizzle, yeah. We're getting beyond just alcohol with the intoxication on the Forge Light engine. It's gonna get pretty nuts, I think. We're gonna be like full on tripping balls. <laughs> you know, that would be cool. A, there, is I there an acid in the uh, There's magic mushrooms in EverQuest. You can buy them on the uh on the, the station cash store. They're really disappointing, though. I tried them out, and it's just... Oh. <laughs> 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 Your screen just slowly turns different shades of colors, like, one oh. at a time. It's pretty lame. Are you sure it wasn't just a bad trip? <laughs> no. <laughs> right. uh, I mean, I want to refund it. Yeah, I have right? a question, like, yeah, you, like, you pay station cash, but you gotta take all of them at once for it to do anything, like... <laughs> it's like, man, I, I spent, like... That. I spent like a thousand station cash and I only took one, didn't do anything. You know, you pop all of them at once and all of a sudden like you're, you're run, you, <laughs> you run forward and all of a sudden you're like in a different dimension. Like I'm in the plane of, I don't know where I am right now. <laughs> you get so messed up. You have flashbacks every like two or three times you log in. <laughs> you think you're training the zone and you're still in one spot in the middle of the, the city. <laughs> like you start playing as Fippy Darkpaw. <laughs> yeah. Just so you know. The Evercast show does not condone drug uh, drug behavior. <laughs> no, just figured we should do this. Kind of this is video game. Yet. This is video game use. Yeah. <laughs> um, next question: Will Flattis grow his beard next month? I don't think Flattis can grow a beard, can he? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. It, uh, tomorrow he has to I slay have a dragon, have whiskey hit his face. I think. <laughs> That's gonna happen. That's gonna happen. That's what happens in November. <laughs> I go off and I slay dragons and hit let whiskey hit my face. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, no, the beard is coming back, uh, so uh, that will be as, as it starts to get towards the November area and December and into the winter. I would consider in Florida, which isn't really winter, but uh, yeah, the beard's coming back. So if you guys missed the beard, it's coming oh. back. I think Talon said he's growing his beard as well. So uh, ever cast. I, I've, I gotta say, like. You gotta get the beard as soon as possible because with your hair as short as it is, it makes your head look bigger. My oh oh thanks. <laughs> Call
Pumped Not like an air air dite, dite, but... No, no, it's fine. <laughs> Just like one giant air dite, that's all. It's okay, that's okay. Um, I do have another okay. question. Um, and this is, what is with all these flattest specific questions? We don't have any like questions for Tobrin, Wreck, or Legendary. You guys Either are slacking. I want to <laughs> see, I want to see more so questions in chat for everybody else. He is, he is. Um, what's a leyline network? I, this is the teleport system that will be instilled in Landmark and possibly EverQuest next. Actually, definitely EverQuest next. It's a Norath kind of name for their teleportation system. The lore itself goes into like a deep uh, historical magic. Um, that can only be conducted by the portal mages, right? Or was it? It wasn't called. It was just called the portal network in EQ EQ one EQ two, right? Leyline's a new yeah. name. Yeah, I think Leyline's a new name. Okay, yeah. you're referring uh, to similar things. It's just like I can the explain how it lines. works if you want, though. Sure. Yeah. Go right ahead. So in Landmark, there's the central spire hub. That's a crystal. There's other crystals dispersed throughout the island at different. Um, radiuses from the uh, from the central spire as well as different depths and the purpose for the landmark ley line system is so that way when you and your buddies want to log in and just go straight to hell and go you know into the the lowest zone and start doing your your business down there you don't have to spend the first hour getting down there you just get down there and you can just go get to business so there's going to be a little bit of fees and stuff associated with it, just maybe a little bit of currency and maybe a portal shard to get from point A to point B. But it's going to be a hell of a lot faster than actually running and digging down to those locations. So that's mostly the point of the ley line system and landmark is to increase your mobility across an island rather than um, you know just having to run from point A to point B everywhere or at this point exploit the gallery system like we've all been doing because it's two tele oh, uh, that's great. two minute teleports with no uh, shard to actually get from point a to point b yeah would it be <laughs> cool in eq next if uh the territories and who controls them affected the ley lines like all that yes that portal that'd be down. amazing you know we need to we need to go handle that my that's camera over here okay. or something i could even see that being something where um factions specifically own certain mm. ley lines and if one faction isn't in good relations with another one they just they don't ley line with each other they right. you know, it's like no 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 we if they come through or we come through it's going to basically be a war that'd be awesome absolutely or having wars that are conducted between ley lines because not one side can't secure it from the other side you know that's definitely possible all right listen we got like 20 12 minutes so I'm, we're gonna we're gonna rapid hit these questions <laughs> rapid, go, go, go. Speed round. all right so all right should mount speed be directly proportional to the terrain it is walking slash running into yes yeah, like are we talking yes. like uh if you're in a swamp you slow down or we're going yep. up a mountain yeah. it would go okay. slower yeah oh, yes. absolutely Got yeah that would be awesome absolutely and they can do that, right? Because Forge Light already has Planet Side uh, built into it, and they have different uh, actual mechanics to the cars. Like, oh, there's a suspension system on this one, and it works differently. Like, yeah. there's a lot of systems built in, so that would be awesome. Yeah. Angles should matter. Yeah. Uh, how do you folks feel about landmark crafting where your items have randomized stats? It's the first iteration. I think they can go deeper with it. I like the idea of randomized stats for a crafter that's very inexperienced. It's like, holy crap, I'm just glad I was mm. able to make a sword that actually doesn't break when I hit something with it. Hot <laughs> damn, I'll take whatever I can get. And then later, it's like, oh yeah, I know it needs to have you know the tensile strength here. It needs to be balanced here. The harmonic balance needs to be like this. And like make something that's really, really superior. My camera was screwed up again. God! Next time, I'm going to adjust cameras properly. Okay, sorry. Next time, Continue. I'm just going to host it, all right? Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, I will, I will say that Talon is going to be, like, applauding himself. I decided not till, I don't know, an hour and a half before the show to set up my OBS with all the overlays and everything. And then Legendary came in probably four minutes before the show started for so adjust cameras. It's so, fine. You know, it's cool. It's cool. Um, it's fine. Listen, all right. We let's roll go, with we the punches. Going. Let's go. Let's keep going. All right. All right. Uh, how much of an impact should crafting have a min-max uh, min gameplay? Should a crafting lot. have on min-max? Oh, there we go. Uh, yeah, a lot. I think that crafters should have uh, the same on-level, if not better, uh, gear that you find out in the world. Uh, slash off bosses. So I think we're all in agreement there. 
I think crafters are going to be the big force of the min-maxing. Yeah, I, I think that's kind of the where we want to see them go. Give crafters, give give the people that want to craft the game that they deserve. So, uh, listen, if I'm cutting you guys off, you have something to say, just jump in and say it. <laughs> uh, are they going to put uh, contrastless brightness sliders uh, in e landmark slash EQI? I hope so. I hope so too. Uh, <laughs> that'd be nice. I hope so. I, I at least hope for EQN. Uh, maybe Landmark they want to keep it simple and just let the the other part, the other all the other stuff in Landmarks shine, and not worry about like creating a character. Maybe I don't know. I'd even love to see a desaturation bar. There's this game Betrayer where you can turn the saturation down to zero. It actually starts like that. Special things are highlighted in red, but most of the game's black and white. I love it so much. I'd love to be able to do that with Landmark. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, let's see. Question. Rec wanted dirty questions. The overlays are on the character themselves in Tomb Raider. <laughs> oh, wait. That's not a question. That's more of a statement. <laughs> question. Why is it that every time I ask a question, you misunderstand it and go on a 20-minute tangent? Because uh, that's I'm not asking. Goal. Listen. Listen. What? You want you want structure. You, <laughs> yeah, you want structure. You wait till Tamlin gets back. <laughs> You got to deal with what you get here. <laughs> Jeez. All right. Uh, okay, that's. I guess that's it for... That's it for the question. Yeah, See, that was too question. much rapid fire. Shame on you. Boom. You were terrible at right. pacing things out. Now we have nine asked, minutes. Uh, he asked me, but I think we can all answer it. Like, uh, would you like custom rule set servers in Next or one cloud server? I don't know like what a cloud a, server is. Uh, Unpopular I think, opinion, I, one server. Like a mega server, maybe? Like mega with server, MT, I think it's a mega yeah. server. Yeah, like oh, a server has one. Uh, I, I think we know they're not going to do that, though, right? We do. It, for, we do. Uh, for the yeah. sake of latency, I don't think it would be a good but, uh, idea. Eve, you can pull it off because there's no Twitch gameplay to it. It's mm -hmm. all issuing commands, and then the server just interprets it. It's a completely different thing when you're actually, you know, actively running and jumping and shooting and you know you got things on tight cooldowns and that stuff to deal with i guess it depends on the population uh look at wildstar wildstar's population dipped and they decided that it would be better for the community to make a mega server mm -hmm. so i i but if this is a free-to-play game versus a pay-to-play game so there you go you know Not every... you know what's going to be interesting is uh what they're going to do when it comes time to merge servers you know, when the population just plummets, no. you know? I don't think they're going to merge servers. I don't think they want to. I think they want to try to avoid that as best as possible. I, I think that they're going to start off with a small list of servers. And, and if they start to see issues, then they'll start adding, I think, maybe one or two at a time. Instead of what a lot of MMOs do is like, oh, we're getting so many. And well, they, they instantly add like six, seven servers right off the bat. So people can start spreading out. And then you run into <laughs> issues later when people stop playing. I honestly think they would probably be more likely to flex the uh, population caps more than anything to, you know, bump it up to 3,000 instead of 2,000 and put the server architecture in place to support it rather than having, you know, two extra servers when they previously had four. Yeah. yeah oh, wait, I would, okay. That's what I would like to say. So maybe, maybe Cody means uh, we can jump between servers like we do in Landmark. I think that would be awesome. Yeah, I would not? love to have that, but there's that. a reason why we can't, and that's if you participate in an event on one server and you go to another server, you can't already have participated in an event and then participate mm. in the event. It's yeah. there's a lot of paradox potential as well as if there are going to be like legendary items, there's only one of on the server, and you run away to another server with it. Well, great, I'm dual wielding legendary swords, <laughs> and some other server is screwed. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess that's yeah. that's kind of true. But that goes to balancing and stuff. I think there's still a way to do it if you design the game properly around it. Um, and I still would like it. At least give us instant transfers. I, I don't know. Yeah. I, it's it's so old school I, I to I'd be like, oh, I'm stuck on this Planet server. Um, yeah, maybe with Planet Side Two. Uh, the the thing is, the only reason for different servers i imagine other than population is rule sets so a pvp server versus a, a non-pvp server but i still think that if you're basing the systems off off one system instead of making them two separate ones that you don't have to worry about balance too much or anything and i, I don't know if i want to play with a friend who accidentally rolled on a different server let me click on even if i do the same rallying call i think there's ways to design it to where it doesn't break the gameplay and yeah i don't know i don't know i i'd like to see it
Uh, I want to see individual servers where server pride, you're not jumping around, and uh, definitely different rule sets. That was another part of this question. Yeah, I, 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 I some PvP. PvP. I was going to say, I kind of agree with Rack. I kind of want some server pride. I want to be able to, like, don't get me wrong. I think if they, we can have, like, server, cross-server communication, that'd be cool if, like, I'm on one server, my friend's on another. I would like to chat with them and stuff like that. Like, that'd be kind of fun. And, like, mm -hmm. still have a character on, like, a PvP server that I can go roll and play with. And, but I can still chat with my friends. I, I think server. that'll be in. That's in both EverQuests already. Yeah, it yeah, is. So, yeah, so as long as, we're, as long as we got that, I think we'll be okay. That's so, a good point. But I still... Uh, anything? Uh, real quick, uh, I guess because we have like four minutes left. Oh, wait, we have one more question. How do you feel about cats, everyone? I, I like cats and dogs. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Kitty cat. Person. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I got some pictures of my kitty cat here. Kitty cat. Oh, God. No. Oh, oh, my God. camera is yeah. on me. <laughs> oh, God, don't do that. <laughs> my, cat my cat was just in here a second ago on camera, so you know how I feel about that. Yeah. Uh, Rec, the cat, dog person. Oh, that Chewy, oh. Chewy made his whole <laughs> camera crash. I I might like attract a lot of hate, but uh, I don't like pets. Apparently, uh, my camera doesn't like no changes pets. in Ow. brightness. <laughs> uh, you don't like any pets, but he loves Lincoln Park. Fine. Fish, like any pets, none. Oh my, yeah. Really? Well, yeah. I don't like pets. I don't like them leaving their their messes everywhere. <laughs> no. All right. Hmm. <laughs> it's fair enough. Fair enough. Um, so my camera right. problem has to do with the brightness changing in the room too much. The camera like dies. I I don't know. It's weird. But I wish you guys Dead could see these no pictures. Camera. These pictures are awesome. Nope. <laughs> okay, continue on. Continue on. All my right. camera's uh, filtering nonsense right now. We got uh, like four minutes left, by the way. Yeah. So, so let's let's do this. Uh, Legendary. Where can people find you? What are you doing? And in what are you gaming on, real quick? Yeah, so you can find me, of course, twitch.tv front slash Legendary Neurotalks. You can find me on YouTube, Legendary Neurotalks. And you can find me on Twitter, at Legendary Neuro. Half the time I'm streaming during the week, I'm doing Who's Gaming Now, which is a lot of demos and interviews and giveaways of all sorts of new and awesome indie games. Noodle Cat and Crem Check are on the team, too. So, you know, follow them as well, because they're also awesome. And uh, other than that, the other half of the time is mostly spent on uh, Landmark and a little bit of H1Z1. If you want to be on Dead Feature Ramp, Live Feature Ramp, or get your builds uh, featured on Content and Creations, I actually have three application forms you can find on my Twitch page. Go apply, and I will, uh, I will get you on when I can. Cool. Rec, uh, what, are you, what are you on? What are you playing? All right. Uh, I'm Rec and Momo on Twitter and Twitch. I'm resurrecting the YouTube and uh, just started Twitch. I'm playing Landmark and uh, EQ1. So, yeah. Got Very it. Cool. Very cool. Mr. Tobin Ernwood. Hi. Bay. Um, Bay. <laughs> um, I'm Tobin Ernwood. You can find me on Twitter at Tobin Ernwood, YouTube at Tobin Ernwood, and of course on Twitch at Tobin Ernwood. I stream whenever, so be sure to follow me. Uh, it's kind of doing the YouTube thing again, so be sure to subscribe in there. And yeah, if you don't want to follow me on Twitch, you should because there are some hilarious conversations between me and Flatus. Like, yes. Yes. Yep. I I'm, your, also, uh... I'm also used to the word bay. But like, yeah, also, no one. <laughs> You know what the funny thing is? Like some of them even happen in DMs. Like, <laughs> like you think like it's a can normal I conversation. Them, can I quote one of them, please? Oh yeah, please go ahead. I'm <laughs> so going to. This this is just gonna be an insight on what our lives are like. Hold on. Where, where yeah. This like, if you think it's just like us joking around on Twitter, it goes deeper than that sometimes. No. Right. I just quote myself here. Wait, did you just lock my chastity belt? <laughs> yep. And then he replies, "Nope, I got your deal locked down." So, <laughs> <laughs> yep, that happened. So yeah, that and that was DM. That was not even on that like DM. on. Uh, that was DM. There are more messages so. beyond that. There are oh more yeah. More. There are yep. More uh, more. Chewy, where can people find you? I know you don't really stream as often, but uh, where can people find you? Yeah, no. Um, you can find me on my Twitter. That's my main form of um, shouting out. I also have a blog, which isn't really gaming related um i actually haven't posted a single gaming related blog. my screen is still black awesome. you can find me in the nether for i do not exist in reality okay anyways 
Um, mostly Evercast is my main mode of expression, so if you um, like my opinions or anything like that or, or want to talk to me, this is the main mode to reach me other than Twitter. Um, but as always, I've been an MMO, game, MMO gamer for a long time, uh, still trying to get into the industry maybe, and um, check out my personal blog if you like random uh, general you... topping, topics. I was going to say, do you want people to know what server you're on EQ2 and the yeah, social yeah. kind of... Absolutely. Um, if you play on ButcherBlock, I, ra I ran them recently. God, I can't talk anymore. It's too late. I, I recently transferred over to ButcherBlock. I was on Crushbone for a long time, but I'm playing with a good friend now. Um, and we uh, plan to hit up the new content very soon. So if you guys do want to join in any EverQuest 2 fun, be sure to reach out to me. Tobrin's on a different server, but he doesn't play much anyways, and he's going to transfer to ours eventually. Yeah, so don't worry about that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but that that's it for me. All right, on. All right, and uh, I'm Flattis, and you can find me uh, at Flattis on Twitter, and you can find me at Flattis on Twitch, and uh, I should be streaming horror games for the rest of the month. I was streaming a little bit of Ghostbusters video game earlier today because I, I, I had an urge to play uh, Ghostbusters. So, but uh, yeah, if you want to go watch me uh, play, like, let's see, I'm playing like the Cat Lady soon. Uh, that should be interesting. That's a point and click, like kind of like horror type game. Uh, it's pretty fantastic. And uh, I'm also playing Final Fantasy XIV. If you play Final Fantasy XIV, and we just started the Helsing Army Guild on that, and uh, we're my, myself, Sun Glare, Crayola Kitty are uh, playing that, and Ze Zeklin, I believe is his name. Uh, <clears throat> so if you guys want to come do that, uh, I, we actually want to kind of raid in that. So that should be fun. <laughs> that should be something different. I'm a big Final Fantasy fan, so I kind of like that. And I don't know what Legendary is doing, but he's doing something. <laughs> he's and, doing it uh, well. The, the but he's doing it well. <laughs> Laying close to the camera thing. Yep. I just decided to do it again because uh, it's yep. hilarious. Yep. And uh, so, and uh, find me here at uh, Evercast. And you can follow Tamlin at Tamlin and Kyles at Everkai on uh, Twitter and, and follow at Evercast Show. And send us emails. Do that. Tons of emails. We love to hear your feedback. We, we try yeah. and make the show the best that it can be. Um, send us. Oh, send not us this questions. week. But no, uh, every week, every week. We, we, um, we thrive on you guys. We love to voice our opinions, and we love that you love us when we voice our opinions, because literally we probably wouldn't listen to ourselves speak about these things. So we're glad that you know. enjoy it. Um, I, don't, I don't know about you. I wouldn't listen to me. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> Flatus has a big ego. No, ah, I said it. <laughs> No kidding. Um, absolutely. Uh, we are over time. Um, I yeah. guess we're gonna we let our three started. guests next week. Uh, Tamlin and Kyle will probably be, be back, and we should still have a guest. We're not sure. We'll let you know about the topic. <laughs> yeah, um, Chewie and I will be off the show, but <laughs> yeah, Tamlin and Kyle will be back. You might not ever see us again. Um, but yeah. other than that, we still do have a blog, evercastshow.blogspot.com, where Tamlin tries to post the upcoming subjects, uh, and there's even a place to comment and leave your feedback. So. Be sure to follow us, and as always, we're Evercast Show connecting to the... Wow, my phone just went off. We are Evercast Show. Jeez. Professionalism is our standing point, and we're glad that you guys tune in all the time. Um, so thank you for our guests for joining us and helping fill the void that is Tamlin and Kylest, even though we can never fully replace them in our hearts. Um, but you guys are awesome, I must say. And go ahead and camp us out all it's at the not same time. Put people in your hearts, buddy. No, I know. Right. I know. I know. So, Listen, um, you, yeah. You three gotta go camp us out. You're gonna camp us out simultaneously. <laughs> oh, and we're gonna end with a picture of my cat because I put it up on my screen since you guys couldn't see it. So, oh, <laughs> campus, uh, campus to Catsville. <laughs> <laughs> well timed. <laughs> well, then. I think that's about it. Then I guess so. We'll uh, we'll camp you out. Camping in five, four, four three, three, two, two one. one. See you later. Mm.